السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in beginning who's allowed us this opportunity to gather together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to provide prosperity and happiness for you and your homes and families. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us from our various places and has brought us here together in these moments of reflection and study of the Quran to bless us once again with a gathering with our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in better setting of Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. In Ujala, in a quick succession, I wish to acknowledge the wonderful presentation of our elder, Jazakallah Khair, our dear Imam who spoke before me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to provide him his mercy and rahmah and ilm. Spoke about important um, lessons that we can take from the life of Ayyub alayhi salam. And I thought as I was sitting there that I wanted to take lessons not of that which is positive, but some of the negative lessons that are instructional for us from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us yesterday, we were reflecting upon Surah Al-Kahf. And in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of the man who possessed two gardens. And it's almost as if you can picture my life and your life in the outlook of this man. Alhamdulillah, you and I, we've been given a great deal of prosperity and a great deal of ni'mah. And one of the things that at times we forget is that the prosperity and ni'mah that we've been blessed with, we tend to think it's our own doing. And I look into my life and I look into, alhamdulillah, the generosity and the grace that Allah has visited upon me and my home and family. And at times I can become distracted. And there's this word that Allah uses in the Quran, it's called ghafla. It's called an unawareness, a heedlessness, a forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah uses this example of this man who worked hard in life, who built great things. He was given and gifted a piece of land that he farmed and tilled and irrigated. And farming is back-breaking work. It's not easy. And it doesn't come easy. And this man would go out and toil in search of that prosperity. And finally, after years of getting everything right, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ he entered, but it became a state of zulm, oppression upon himself. He forgot that the making of that prosperity was not just the work of his hands, not just what he had put forward. It wasn't that he used nice clean water, or that he made sure that the sun was in the right setting, or that he had cleared it of weeds and rocks, or he had fertilized it over and over again and that he turned over the crops and made sure that it was to be in the seasons in accordance to the best harvest that he could assume. He entered into his garden assuming that what he had put forward was sufficient and that it is his own doing that has resulted in that ni'mah and barakah. And Allah uses this statement in the Qur'an that the man looks at his garden and he says, "Ma adunnu an tabida hadhi abada." This blessing that I have, nothing can change it. Subhanallah! Look at all the work I've done. I've put the roots are deep. It's been fruiting year after year. The water source is secure. My servants and people helping me, they've trained them well. I know exactly, and they know exactly what's needed and what should be done. And he turns to his friend, his neighbor, who has a neighboring farm, a neighboring property, who should produce similar results, but fails at it. And it's almost as if he scoffs at his friend and says, why am I prosperous except my intelligence, hard work, what makes you and I different isn't just mere luck, it's my doing. And his friend turns to him and he says, لَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ 
إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا. Perhaps next time you enter your garden, you should say, MashaAllah, this isn't just my own doing. This is from the will of Allah. This is from the blessing of Allah upon me. There's no power except that which has been given and bequeathed to me by God. You see that I work like you work, and I plant like you plant. The water you use is the water I use. The soil you have is comparable to my soil. There is a divine intervention and blessing that has given you favor other than me. And Allah tells us in the Quran, I increase some above others in their rizq in life. The man takes a look and he says, No. Whatever you're saying is meaningless. There isn't even this concept of a next life and all of this. This is nothing to me anymore. I'm here and now. I'm living in the moment. This is my dunya and my akhirah. And as is the nature of life, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And as such are man to man, we give them days in turn. يَوْمٌ لَنَا وَيَوْمٌ عَلَيْنَا A day for us and a day counted against us. The man goes to sleep and wakes up and overnight, وَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةً He woke up to a desolation, a destruction, a reprieval, a, dis a, a destruction of everything that he has put into his life and into his effort, into his sweat and toil in that ground. The well that was deep and sweet became salty. The roots shriveled up. The infection cast from leaf to leaf and limb to limb. That which was hanging vines became nothing. And he stood there striking hand over hand at how hard he had worked and how nothing remained. وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا And he said, I wish I had never joined partners in worship with Allah. The partner that he had joined wasn't an idol that he worshipped, it was himself. And the message that I share with you today in these last few minutes of my discussion is don't be so self-centered so self-absorbed, so in tune with what you have produced in life that you're blinded to the reality of the prosperity that is provided to you by Allah. There are people on whose shoulders you stand. There's a father and mother, a grandfather and a grandparent, by whose toil and effort you were able to study and graduate your school and become that doctor, or produce that business, or carry on that tradition. You didn't make it from yourself. You're a person who had other, others provide for you what you now reap and have not sown entirely on your own. The message that we find in that story in the Quran is that as hard as you work, Recognize that there are people who work harder, but have less. And as wealthy as you become, recognize that there are people who work harder and have less. And as self-made as you assume yourself to be, know that what Allah has provided you in that trail and path to your ascension was not your own doing and recognize the giants on whose favor you now reap this harvest. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to awaken our hearts to what our eyes fail to see and to allow our tongues to speak proudly of the ni'mah Allah has been generous to us with so that we are thankful walahu shakirina wa hamideen thankful and praising of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to acknowledge the sacrifices of those who preceded us so that we can be given the prosperity that we enjoy today. I was giving a session at the Mu'adh Trust. I'm doing Tafsir Surah Maryam 
uh, until tomorrow. And I'm looking at this massive structure that Alhamdulillah I'm hosted in. And the buildings and the masjid and the beauty of it. And it came to my mind and heart, it's the pretext of what I'm speaking to you of today. Of what people, of what generations, decades ago, were the ones who laid the foundation for someone like me and others seated in it today to enjoy it. Don't be blind to the people who preceded you as a young man, as a young sister in this country. Know that there were people who swallowed their pride so that today you can carry your head high in pride. Know that there's people who laid that foundation for you to enjoy the masajid and the madaris and the institutes such as al-hikmah that I'm proud to be associated with today. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of those who have preceded us the barakah of all of that which we will do into the future. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَنَبِيِّنَا وَحَبِيبِنَا مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add barakah into the food that you've consumed and make it something that is a source of health and wealth moving forward into your life. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.